So for my first game, um, I wanted to try Sims. Um, it's the mobile version, so it's free. Um, I wanted to try it out because I remember playing it when I was younger with my cousins um, and like on PC. So um, I wanted to see how this mobile version went and the fact that it's free, um, wanted to see the different features it had um, rather than when you know it was on Microsoft or things like that. But um, I've been playing for a couple days now and I'm actually really intrigued. Um, it is very um, fun to play. I didn't think there would be as many features as, you know, a game you actually purchase. Um, and I know they've come out with different varieties and stuff like that, but the mobile version is pretty fun. So far, I have built my home. Um, it's kind of like real life where you have to go work a job to get money in order to buy furniture and buy things for your house. Um, I just created a roommate. So right now I'm actually in the roommate's life, um, controlling her life and making money for her. Um, but it was funny because I wanted to talk about the magic circle and how, you know, this game kind of sets me apart from real life. Whereas the game is almost like real life where you, you know, you're in a job, you're doing activities, um, you know, you're interacting with people, but it's, it's fun because normal rules of reality are kind of changed in this game. Um, I can make my own life in this game. Um, so I feel like that kind of sucks me in where I get to control everything where obviously in real life, life happens, things change. Um, or in this, you can kind of, you kind of pick and choose what you say to people. Um, you know, how long you want to work. I can sit here all day and just work at this coffee shop until I make as much money as I want. Um, so I think the cool thing about it is I can make my own world essentially. Um, they pick the house for me, but I get to pick where all my furniture goes. Um, how often I interact with people, you also get points and, and things like that for interacting with people. So, um, yeah, I've been sucked in. I, I come home from work and I play this all night long <laughs> and it actually, I just wanted to play this before this class even started. So now I had an excuse to do it. So I wanted to add one of the cool things I think about this game is that you can make a new world every time. So I could have played it years ago in my world in that Sims, you know, game would be way different than what it is now. Um, you can also play as different characters and, you know, make a different world for yourself. Um, so it was cool to see how, from when I played it in the past with my cousins to now, um, how it's changed, but also I can still make it how I want, um, which is also another cool part, why it sucks you in and why you want to play it. Um, and the way you interact with people and stuff like that, you determine. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, I can definitely see they've made a lot of changes. Um, obviously, I was I was younger when I played the games with my cousins. I don't remember if what if it was Sims. The, I think it was the original Sims, the first Sims game that came out. But obviously, it was made back in the 2000s. So these games are way more updated. Um, the screen quality is way more amazing. You get way more details um, and things like that. But yeah, it's just, even though through the years, I like that it kind of still stays the same, but it's different at the same time. So one of my favorite parts of the game is that I actually get to go out and do activities and work and um, participate in little challenges. Um, I'm kind of just challenging yourself, but um, it, keeps the game interesting. Um, you're earning more points and coins and also cash for yourself. And then you're able to build your life further from doing these little things, which are actually very fun. Um, so that's one of my favorite parts of the game, I would say, is um, interacting with people and also just um, getting to compete in these little challenges. I remember one discussion post we were talking about, you know, categorizing the games into what kind of games they were. 
And I feel like this is just kind of like a lifestyle type of game where, you know, there's no pressure. Uh, there's no guns and shooting. There's no, um, I mean, there's some little missions you have to do. And um, like I just did a, like a pastry challenge or whatever. Um, but I think it's very just calm and relaxing. And you just kind of get to figure out your life within the game rather than um, actually uh, playing a game against an opponent. Um, but I also think there's a lack of that element as well because I feel like there's a lack of, like, defined goals in this game. Um, I mean, the goal is to just kind of form your life, make decisions, um, make friends, you know, relationships, whatever it may be. But for some reason, I kind of like the fact that games are competitive and there's some you know, factor where you're competing against something to do something. Um, whereas this is just kind of, you know, I could do this in my sleep type of thing. So an example of the point I'm trying to get across is right here. She's just um, partaking in a like little cooking challenge. And basically I wish I personally was the one having to make whatever she's making, the pie or the, the mixture, or whatever. Whereas instead I'm just watching her do it. Um, so that's kind of what I wish would be added to the game is that, you know, players could actually be involved in in certain challenges rather than just watching it. Another thing I want to touch base on was in chapter four of our book, it talks a lot about um, casual games, especially in the 2000s becoming um, a greater thing. So just kind of these games that are very mindless. Um, Things that you don't have to invest a lot of your time into and, you know, you're still getting pleasure and you're still getting a good experience out of the game. Um, so I feel like The Sims franchise in itself is just a series of casual games. <laughs> So I just got home from work um, and I started to play my game for a little bit and not gonna lie, I may have played at my desk a little bit today. But anyways, um, I was thinking about why, you know, developers made this game and I was reading up on it a little bit and um, I have my notes down here, but Will Wright, the person who, you know, thought of the game, basically developed it. Um, he lost his home in a fire and the thought of making a game and kind of rebuilding the home and also just rebuilding a life after um, and you know just after the initial house um, rebuilding brought him to you know make this game of like almost making your own life um, kind of a start over a redo. Um, so I think that was also just a refreshing aspect of games back in the 2000s. I think a lot, to me, of what I remember, a lot of the popular games coming out in the 2000s were like Halo and, um, you know, a lot of different gun games, Grand Theft Auto and stuff like that, or at least that's what I played. Um, and y'all can correct me if I'm wrong, but... Um, I think that The Sims is a very refreshing, um, a refreshing game, and I think that it was very well thought out during that time to create a game like this, because this is just, to me, this is just a fun game that you don't have to pull out of stress into, um, you don't throw your controller across the room because you get mad that you lost, <laughs> um, and it's easy, it's easily accessible, um, and throughout the years, you know, it was just on Microsoft and PC, um, the streaming server, but now, you know, it's changed to PSP and Wii and a PlayStation, and now I'm playing it on my iPad or, you know, I can play it on my mobile phone. So it definitely has, you know, shifted and um, shaped its way, you know, through the years. So I think that one of the um, particular elements in this game that works is the, uh, is the idea of uh, personalization. 
and I feel like in mini games you don't get to personalize your character as much as you would in this game so for example this character is my roommate in the game and it actually looks like my roommate in real life um, so I think it's cool and helps me want to play the game more and longer um, when I have characters that look like me look like my friends um, and I have the option to you know pick and choose what I say to characters rather than other games kind of don't have that same aspect I think And I think the personalization aspect of the game was chosen by game makers um, just to keep people more enticed into the game. Um, just every step of the way you have fun um, no matter what you're doing because of that aspect.